Hello. On this week's episode my of the Tech Jackson. Academy podcast, I interview Ananda Grace, one of my favorite people in the whole like world. To welcome you to the Tech Ananda came to our school podcast. as an insurance industry the professional, looking for a change, and boy did she get a change. Camp. She did extremely well while she was in the program, and later landed a job at Intel. You can so tell you about that journey and more on this week's podcast. That's learncodinganywhere.com. Hello. My name is Jack Stanley, and I'm the co-founder of the Tech, Tech Academy. Academy the Tech Academy operates a 15-week software development boot camp. Our program can be taken so online from anywhere in the world. And you can find out more at our website, learncodinganywhere.com. That's learncodinganywhere.com. Enjoy. What were you doing? Were you running a call center? I was an operations manager in? for call centers. Uh, okay. I was in, I enlisted when I was okay. still in high school. It's been a long time since I, I talked to you about this. Why, I had just turned what was it that was driving you my year to even look at technology? And why that's did you care about very interesting, uh, and I'm actually going to bring that out in my tech talk too, because I wanted to kind of backtrack really a little bit, but um, always, I wanted it to, uh, to change my career, mm -hmm. and I watched my brother, you know, really advance in that area and do some exciting, cool things, and you know, he was so smart, it was so exciting to see him do that, that I just thought, you know what? He inspired me to really to start looking at programs as, afterwards. As and have you thanked him for that? Oh, yes. And he's going to be here today. Uh, very cool. We have inspired each other throughout the years and yeah. supported each other. That's, that's really cool. Brand. But I noticed you haven't have tatted up. Like that. No, I haven't. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I, I have a friend who's um, a complete nerd, but also like just kind of like tattoos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he has and tattoos in binary. Oh, wow. Wow. That's pretty hardcore. That's pretty that's dedicated. Hardcore, to, exactly. Yes. And each one translates <laughs> to an ASCII <laughs> like letter, <laughs> and it actually Why spells something. Like okay, that. good. Well, good. You okay. followed that through then. <laughs> that's so awesome. It was, it was I'm a nerd. I'm not that nerd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a permanent nerd. That's a permanent nerd for sure. Um Okay. So, so, you know, I, I know that probably some of this kind of you may basic, end up repeating, you know, that's tech talk, but yeah, I'm actually also like the technical aspect. Um, um, so communications, you know, communications, encryptions. All that I hired stuff. you after you got done with the school. So, I, I mean, I, I know how much we thought of you in terms of your skills and abilities. Uh, What's the journey been yeah, like so after you know, after you left here? How did it go? What was the first job like? What was it like getting your feet wet? And so, tell me about you know where you've ended up now while, and your journey. Uh, I did a sure. Uh, a so, again, so let me first I thank you for giving me that opportunity to work with you right after the school. It really did help me transition into the job that I got right after the school. And you helped me connect with a couple of people and helped me land an interview. That's right. Yes, you did. And, and it, really it was with kind of another insurance company. It was at VelaPoint. No, that, it was at VelaPoint yeah. Insurance. Yeah. And well, it was for a junior developer base. position. Perfect. Uh, so I... I had a little bit of mixed emotions uh, about that at first because my journey up to <laughs> taking the, the schooling so through Tech Academy, I kind, kind of vowed really I'll never go back to insurance again, right? That's right. Why and so I'm like, okay, I'm so you have me, got me this, this connection. Let me think work. about this. Um, uh, this but I, I also remembered back to a Tech Talk you gave and I think a former student about leveraging what you knew prior and what you had experience in as you transition into the technical aspect of that industry. And so it was really great. So my first interview was with the so engineer that 16. was looking for a junior <laughs> uh, developer to work with. He was the one and only I, engineer in that uh, whole it's been that department. I think yeah, maybe a, even the whole company at yeah, the time. Marlon. Marlon, exactly. Right. Um, and so like he, uh, it was an interview with him and with one of uh, the other managers in the group. Along. And he, of course, and asked me some very technical questions about SQL. It was very SQL specific. And so I spent the days leading up to that, definitely studying my SQL stuff and coding. And so I got in there. And of course, I was really nervous. Prior to that, I had interviewed other people myself. Self, I'd been interviewed at all been more behavioral based and definitely not technical based questions. Right. So I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, but I mean, so was, there was a mix of it, it in the interview. After that, just but I would say I probably only got really about fifty percent of his questions right, mm -hmm. and I thought for sure, oh, this can't look good. Was, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but okay, it was a good experience for really me to go through my first technical in interview. What um, whatever I do or um, don't get out of so this, at least I got the experience. From, mm -hmm. And so two days later, I got a call back, and the big boss who lived out in Michigan wanted to interview me. So I thought, oh, thank goodness I passed, you know, the first interview. And again, I tried. I tried to be as personable during the interview as I could. And if I didn't understand yourself. a technical question or <laughs> so, know how to answer it, I would at least explain what I did know mm -hmm. and then how I would go about yeah, finding the answer. I will say for being and a, uh, so that I think helped camp, maybe you know, uh, get me past that for some <laughs> <laughs> interview. And then the big oh, boss came in to interview me. And he's a sales guy. He had no technical experience. But 
that oh, Marlon reported to him, and I would be reporting exactly. directly so, to him yeah. as well. After, um, and, and his as interest as during, during the interview was much more on what uh, I did so, yeah, in my previous so life I, as I an operations manager for an insurance company and the projects and initiatives I had run. And that was good. I felt comfortable with that. I knew how to address those questions. And he said, well, our engineer likes you and wants to give you an opportunity. He knows you're at junior level, so I wanted to come in and see how you were. I like you. You won't only be doing junior developer stuff, but I'm going to draw on you for some of these other things. And I thought, okay, how awesome is that? I get to kind of do both. I didn't know exactly how that would really impact my day-to-day work, but I thought something I'm comfortable with and good at and something I'm not so comfortable with and just brand new at. And so, great. But it didn't take very long before I started to really run into some challenges. And it was it was a struggle. It was kind of a pull between those non-technical projects and what Marlon needed from me as far as junior developer. And he was overwhelmed anyway. And so even though I knew his intentions were always to help coach me along my path, knowing that I was very new into it, but he was overwhelmed. And if I couldn't perform the way he needed or when he needed, which is totally understandable, he would get visibly and publicly even frustrated with me. So that pulled down my confidence. And so I gravitated a little bit more towards these other projects. Yeah, that was you. You talked about dumb luck. You sold the website when you Exactly, exactly. So so that's where I was. But then I landed back in this headspace of, am I just going back to what I left before I came to the Tech Academy for? And so I was having another... That's career struggle. That, that's, yeah. that's and I like um, so I started like, to voice I've, some of my concerns uh, with some of my friends, you know, that I had met at the gym. And, and I found out at that point, she worked at McAfee. And, and so she said, oh, I would love to work with you. Are you kidding me? And my boss is hiring for this new project he's starting up. And it was also for a contract position. But I thought, yes, let me interview. I want to interview. And so the next day I got called because she had passed my resume on to him. And he said, sounds like you, you might be someone we're interested in. Will you come in on site and do a panel interview? So this was only, I want to say, two months into my time at Bella Point. Yeah. And so, again, I was struggling with what I was going through there and not wanting to, you know, immediately give up on something, but very interested in someone like, you know, McAfee. That sounds pretty awesome to try to get I know you're the professional. You aren't first to give up. No, definitely not. And so, but I wanted to see what it was like. And, and I wanted to keep doors open and just because I got an interview and I, I even maybe the, got the offered a job doesn't mean I had to take it. it. No, it had to be a fit on both ends. Like, oh, coding. As soon as you say but, that, so, like, so oh, since so then, I did it, interview uh, and I did the panel interview. Mm-hmm. What was that like? You're like, well, it, that was the first you time you've done one of that way. Like, yes, yes. And so four people around the table, they each asked a different question and listened to my response. I set up the expectations right up front. You know, you probably gleaned this from my resume, but I am you know, new on the technical side of things and sense, explained what I went through what I studied at the yeah, it's not Tech make Academy. Any sense right off the bat. Uh, yep. But then, but, so, know, so they knew and I think they tempered their questions a little bit on the strictly technical side and, um, to see how I would respond, maybe at a higher level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you understand just, about object-oriented I programming? Things like that. Into it. Thank I goodness I, I remember those definitions and what that means. So I was able to do what I thought was pretty pretty well during the panel interview. You felt better after that one than that first technical interview on SQL. I did, yes. So, and that surprised me a little bit. But I did leave thinking, yep. okay, Where I think they liked me. Kind of a, I think again, how I responded luck. to the questions just was just acceptable. The right yeah. They didn't at, go too at, deep on the, the right technical time. side. Yeah. So, so either that meant to me noticed, uh, that they knew I wasn't going to be able to do it, but they were going to cater to me during the interview, you know, or whatever. So I left feeling pretty good about it, and I didn't hear it for a couple weeks. And I thought, okay, that's okay. I'm going to keep plugging away at my job at Bella Point, doing what I can. And then I got a message back from the hiring manager. And he said, we really liked you, the team liked were you still but in our project got cut and I can no then. longer hire. Yep. <laughs> so that was a big <laughs> disappointment. Like I said, school, I was, um, and I was, and, uh, and definitely a, a bummer. I, I was devastated, but I, I thought, know, well, maybe that's the, the sign. You know, good. Keep working at Bell Point and see what I can do. My um, and at that time, like, right, McAfee was being acquired by <laughs> Intel. Just yep. And my friend that worked yeah. at McAfee um, was now becoming an Intel employee. And she said, well, let's not give up. 
There's this huge hiring I event now for feel, Intel. Like, you know, uh, your give me your resume. But I also and uh, I want to see. This is a good friend. This is a very good friend. And it's funny because she's still trying to get me. Because now that McAfee has divested from Intel, yep. she's yeah, like, okay, come over to McAfee now. <laughs> so it's like. The vagaries of the tech industry. Oh, it man. is, too. But when you have that knowledge and you start getting that experience, like you told me early on, and like you tell your class, you know, these are tools that you're acquiring. And work your network, build your network, work your network, make connections, be visible to people. And, you know, so and online, so yeah. resume. Yeah. And, and so I, definitely I put time her, and effort I, into those things. Kind of and I don't think even if your contract ends at one company or something happens, that you no won't really, find you know, you'll be without for very long. Like what I pay Absolutely. for a product it is, it is built, a I'm going to charge you. I charge for my labor, I charge for my skill, and I charge for my quality. And so she liked that. And then I kind of told her, I'm like, you know, I think on average, doing a website for you, considering I haven't actually met you in person. The modern worker within a week, she actually flew here to Oregon to have an in person meeting. Yeah. You know, and then which um, established my first contract. A software developer like, probably is actually a lot higher wow. than that. Yeah, they she career. took it all back. Um, they had a big board of directors this meeting. Is something we cover and in our, the next thing you know, I'm being contracted to do job placement another, course uh, and that, you know, you an probably international probably project. And I was like, like this is how cool. I played that game of mind jump from contract I mean, to contract. I, here I am, and you know, 20, always try to get a one year old kid just wage increase each time. I guess I'm kind of getting it done. That was own advantages and disadvantages, but. Overall, this, this whole right. it's, experience it isn't, has been It's a very volatile I mean, industry, but if you've got so, the right fundamentals you know, and you network and you're continually I, trying I, to grow I your technical my skills own personal company, and you're uh, a nice person. More of a side game. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, that personality and attitude so comes into play a lot. That's true, isn't it? It is. Yeah. That's yeah. what I found. Yeah, I wasn't just saying that. No, no, it's true. It really does. Infrastructure. Technical. Um, most people are like this. They so want to work with nice people, mm -hmm. but technical people in particular, like as needed as it you're was. a jerk. Yeah, like you work yourself out of a job for that. And a good you know, I've got all yep, these other people myself out of a job, and you. And so here comes my <laughs> that's job a stick in the mud. Let's uh, see now. Kind of <laughs> exactly. So, so tell me about the transition to Intel. How did this happen? My boss. Sure. So, like I said, my my friend had submitted my resume to this huge database at Intel that is putting on this event, and I was an employee referral since she worked there. Uh, and then it was for this huge hiring um, event that was happening at OMSI. It was called OMSI After Dark. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so and I, kind of interviewed so once, um, I got invited because I was an employee we, referral. Mm -hmm. And we, went, and we showed up that night at this huge OMSI Intel I, hiring I event. And there were thousands of people recruiter. there. I mean, the line to so get in was, was around the block. You know, wow. We were probably in line waiting to get in for almost an hour before the event started. It was insane. People were dressed up. They had their briefcases. You know, and you get in and it's just packed with people. Packed with people and hiring managers, but and I saw you know who the hiring kind of managers like were because they had stacks of resumes, literally a, a foot high. Whoa. I'm not exaggerating; yeah. it was I totally insane. I thought, wow, okay, there is there's no way I'm going to get a chance to really make an impression <laughs> at this event, right? Just any sort of business I'm like, all right, great, free food, free drink, <laughs> yeah, fun, fine. fun displays, yeah. so cool. But no, I, no loss here. It was very interesting. I've never been through something like that. That's wild. It was really wild, and so I just you were elbow to elbow and and you would watch people clamoring the to these hiring there. managers that had their clipboard so and, and had their you know place to yeah. keep resumes manager. and everyone was trying to get their ear and it was so almost a shouting now, match when you could uh, see you know hey I want to talk to you oh hey let me tell you wow. about mine so uh, it just felt overwhelming to me and I thought you know I'm not here to really do battle right now resume wars it was resume wars and you went in towards the end of the night you know it was kind of weird because you'd see you know oh, cool. resumes that so had fallen I, off the cart I, and they're you know I underneath the table or something and, I, and it was I will just admit, I'm a little biased. I there's no way I'm getting <laughs> into this joint but <laughs> <laughs> thank you friend for being Wait, such a great way, friend right? and of giving course, me a great mind. I, I, I have, so I didn't hear anything I have a good taste about, about this place later. I, and then I, like I got the, an email it was that long and I will say and maybe it's typical with most big companies but it takes a long time to get you know a job position open that's specific and 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 find our job and interview and all that stuff. Well, yeah, anyway, six, six weeks later, I got an email. I didn't think I would get oh, yeah. any response oh, yeah. whatsoever. Oh, yeah. But uh, the, the hiring it, manager the sent the email like, to me, I, I, and who knows how many others. I think I was blind copied, so it looked kind of like a form letter. Said, okay. Okay. Thank you for attending the hiring event back in October. Like. Not everyone um, by your profile, I think you might be a good candidate for this position I have open. Please respond to me if you're interested. And it had a short description of the job. And also let me know how comfortable you are. And I thought, very interesting. Interesting. So I um, responded yeah. right away. But, uh, oh yeah, because the, the position was for a program coordinator. But so great, I have plenty of that in my yeah, background. Yeah. 
background. So I'm glad to hear um, but back also now, thanks to the school, CVP I have SQL, out. and you know, I had a little experience yeah. at yeah. Yeah. SQL. So yeah. I responded I mean, back it's, right it's, away. It's she said, great. "Great, come I, in for I an interview from, I mean, two days the, from now." The job placement guy. So I thought, "Here we go again." And I went and I interviewed, and she asked me a couple of SQL questions, and then you know, talked for about forty minutes, and she asked me about my background and kind of my perspective on certain things and how I would approach you know coordinating this program that she described to me. And she said, "That is awesome." You were the only person that responded back that said they had SQL, which surprised me. So I'm not sure what profile she searched. Yeah. Uh, she said, "I think you're great. I want to hire you." <laughs> in, the in the interview, at the end of the interview, she said that she didn't hold back, and she said, "How soon can you start?" I did not expect that at all. So I left the interview with a job offer. <laughs> Okay, to our listeners, that's pretty rare. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. So I was, I was, I was stunned coming yeah. out of it. We don't uh, teach now, you know, of we, course, it, it was uh, a contract position. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe that puts some yeah. potential so applicants off marketer, if they thought it was just a short-term contract major, position. Uh, but she described to me it starts out as a three-month contract. But we have plenty of work. You know, we typically extend contracts if you're doing a good job with the potential of hiring you on permanent. So, and this is true. This is pretty typical. From, from what I understand, yeah, and I'm like, okay, now, let's go for it. I'm really excited. Yeah. yeah. And um, so then, you know, the next hard part obviously well was like quitting the job I'd only been at for a few you know, months. Really yes. And uh, and so so that I was not so looking that, forward to. I was yeah, very excited. You know, gosh, Intel. That, yeah, I really didn't even think I'd have have yeah. a shot at any position there. Right off the bat. Um, okay. So so that was tough. So I don't know how much you want to know about that. Well, just just this. I guess um started getting things busted out from a week per, you know, product. What was your philosophy to, about it? What you was know, your point of view about how to handle awesome. it? Awesome. I, mean, I don't need the, the nuts and bolts of how it went down, of, but what were your concerns? What were the things you, you were trying to accomplish in there? Everything that, that we kind of well, out. you know, I think but what was holding me back no from... You know, from leaving right. was letting yeah, my team my down at Vela Point, you know, so that was the struggle. But ultimately, I knew I needed a chance for more advancement. Yeah. I didn't you know, really see the environment at Vela Point changing, his, um, and probably only you know, would I be pulled more in the direction the, the, from no, where I came. Away, away from tech. Away yeah, from and tech. And back into insurance. Yeah. yeah. And so yes. that you, ultimately skills, played into my decision to, okay. to leave. Were, and I honestly thought program, when right? I quit that but you know, the, when you maybe Marlon there, might be a little um, relieved because I wasn't <laughs> as high caliber of, of a, an assistant in the technical side as he needed for yeah, all of the work that he had to do. How have you, um, and then I, how has that gone you know, for you? I knew my, my the big boss from Michigan way. would be a little oh, man, less thrilled about it, but I will tell you, they all went into full on campaign to figure out how to convince me to stay. It was crazy. Wow. They did. In fact, he flew in from Michigan after uh, I gave him notice over the phone and called me into his office for conversations about why I should stay uh, and what they were willing to offer me to stay. And and they couldn't quite offer me what Intel was offering me. Um, But, you know, he tried. And and it was really, it was something to me. It very much was. And and it wasn't just him, but it was Marlon, too. He was actually devastated. That I was going to be leaving, and it made me think, you you know, don't don't be too down on yourself as you start out for your lack of skills or what you think of your lack of skills, because who you are as a person and what you're willing to do and how you work with your team speaks volumes. And I think that he very much wanted to keep trying to work with me. And you know, he apologized. Like, if there's anything I did to make you quit, please tell me. You know, and no, it's not you, Marlon. Please don't think that. You're a great guy. But but I do think who you are is also part of what you. Bring to the uh, table. And to which so I, I was just surprised. The last first, 30 I was seconds a little bit embarrassed of this podcast. I had went up to my upper management and my, my CTO and I was like, hey, you know, I've, it's I've never worked so in software. Who you are, you know, how you treat people, to your, your dignity purchase, and kind of like a willingness to, online, to work so with other people. Used to it, These are the things does, that really matter. They should matter in any industry, but they really matter in technology. And me being a little bit kind of meek about it. I understand it. how they, they were just like, yeah, sure, no problem. Like, because I didn't want to lose you when you worked here either. So they that was also so a hard decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they gave but quality, I mean, quality, quality is, you know, is quality and it, and it, and it does done, come through. Um, there are industries where that, no where problem, it, it you know? doesn't happen yeah. as easily. So 
I started in technology, a, it really, really does. Some, some and really so crazy APIs. I, I, I want this to be a lesson to like everybody who's listening, and if you are students listening, or, or whatever, um, from it really does matter how you treat the, people. The, it matters the, the willingness to let to let other people communicate and understand minimal. what's going on I mean, with them, and and the, actually genuinely collaborate. These things are incredibly learned important. It's, it's no longer a lot more important than whether or not you can describe the most efficient algorithm to solve the sorting problem. Yes, it is. Overall, you can look that up. You can't look up. It would become a nice person. But oh, uh, it handles Google functionality <laughs> for an entire business. Anyway, yeah, that's um, all day that's a heck of a story. Was, that's um, fantastic, a and aura, um, it doesn't surprise me in the least that, that that's um, how it would go for you, asked, right? But uh, I also appreciate the um, the validation of, of what we what we try to do here, and that uh, apparently it helped in some way. I mean, it's you, and you have to do all that work, and you have to be who you are, and treat people the way you treat people. As developers, but um, based on numbers, I'd, I'd like to think we helped. Yes, you absolutely now, did. I mean, without <laughs> that, and actually, my boss even reiterated to me. You know, ultimately, the reason I picked you is because you did have skills. down a rabbit hole with that. that. SQL skills. I was looking for someone with SQL skills. I had to kind of start with that, and then you brought the rest. But so it is, and I definitely want to reiterate that, that going to the Tech Academy was, was definitely one of the best decisions for myself and my career that I made. okay, good. Oh, that's awesome. If this I is really how you want to roll, that's great. Our students are stuck in the middle of library drills on the SQL course. So they might not be thinking that at the moment. Yeah, it's fine. The wisdom and understanding How did you get to that? They do get through it. Um, efficiency. It. Yes. So it's behind. Wow. Well, I I actually could talk to you for, that, that's for why a long time. Well. You're, just, you're, not, you're a phenomenal Oh, I produce so many and bricks. And I, I, this is just an opportunity so to be able to no, share your story. I may well only lay three students. bricks. Uh, but they're the but ones I, I appreciate that you are down to hold the building down doing this with us. It's really, really and awesome. And if I use the wrong bricks, the well, building will appreciate it. My pleasure, truly. So thank yeah. you, Eric, for so many uh, things. Yeah, and for today. Cool. All right. Thank this. you. And this is still we're, one that I use to that? explain to my clients <laughs> why I charge oh the rate God, that I do. Is there's a story about a ship and the engine broke down. So the captain calls four or five different mechanics. They all come through. Hi, this is Jack Stanley again, co-founder so of the Tech this Academy. Old, this older I hope you enjoyed today's no podcast. Working, but he had done it his entire I'd life. like to leave and you with a suggestion. With a tiny hammer we call this one Jack's one, Random one, Tips. One tiny spot on today's this, tip on is punctuality is a highly valued start, commodity. Start For yeah, example, okay, super some companies won't even hire you if you are late to your job interview or attempt rescheduling. Regardless of your reasoning, their viewpoint is, and so if the person can't back, commit like, to a schedule well, and show up on here? time, are you they probably won't adhere to their schedule as an employee. Like, can I get an if you set a meeting with someone, yeah, says, sure. job interview or says, otherwise, showing up when you said you would is key. It's like knowledge to know Tardiness exactly to makes the other person <laughs> feel like they aren't valued. <laughs> Making people awesome, feel important and, is a good character trait because, after all, people are important. Keep in mind that whether we like it or not, I mean, it's, first impressions it's not are always, highly valued you know, in this society. Hey, can you just and if their first impression of you is that you were late, well, that's just not ideal. You know, As with any suggestion I give you, there are, of course, way, exceptions what's, what's and extenuating circumstances. But in those cases, as as if you keep in mind that reliability is an esteemed so, trait in society, that, that you will politely why, reschedule the appointment I, instead I of just not showing up. Company, it's one of the ways as usual, this may seem like common sense, you're not gonna see but the, I've had people not show up to interviews lot, and show up late. Also not gonna see it's just your, not the message you want to send. And again, if you are interested in enrolling in our software developer boot camp, please visit our website, learncodinganywhere.com. During our boot camp, three, four, students learn several in-demand mm -hmm. programming languages. And By the end of the boot issue. camp, <clears throat> students are well-rounded, so entry-level software developers. In addition to our thorough curriculum, one of the things there's, that sets us always, apart you know, is that our program is self-paced, mm -hmm. and, and we offer kind of open now, enrollment, which means students more, can start any time. Oh, yeah, computers. Whether yeah, you're yeah, looking for a career change, stuff, huh? you're unemployed, yeah, or fresh out of high school, all about that, the, whole the Tech Academy is the perfect option for those interested in breaking into the technology industry. LearnCodingAnywhere.com. It's so industry-specific where it's like it wouldn't make sense to. Yeah, and so that's an, another another one of those things where I'm just continuously continuously learning. I always try to better improve myself. You know, one of my morals is learn something new every day. Or one, one of my values. Yeah, is just absolutely. Kinda, just just whether you learn about something, or, you know, another person or about just you know stock market or whatever it is, but just learn something new every day. I try to aim it to be in tech. That yeah, but that would make sense. No, that's fantastic, and and it, it 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 is gratifying to to know that we had some role in that. I, I know that. Um, if you're not, if you're not already, um, you know, a voracious learner, that it may not come that easily to you, you know. Yeah. And, and so we, we we do have students that they really have to work hard to create that within themselves, oh, right? Yeah. But 
um, I think people can hear your story and and see the wisdom, even if it's not easy for them, of driving themselves to learn new things and experimenting. The fact that you're working with Docker, for example, you know, I, I'm I'm reminded of um, diving into MVC many years ago when when it really wasn't that popular in the enterprise. Uh, Microsoft's version yeah. of MVC, right? Other people have done MVC in certain areas for quite a while. And at first, it wasn't even being asked for on jobs. But then there came a point where not only was it being asked for, but you know the typical thing where you see, um, you know, a technology has been out there or popular for two years, and the recruiters <laughs> put out an ad that say they want five years experience exactly. in it. Exactly. <laughs> right? Well, I actually had the experience at that point, you know. And there have been other technologies I've you know, gambled on and, and spent a little bit of time learning that have gone nowhere. Yeah. I think I think containers are here, you know. Oh, yeah. Serverless architecture is one where just that 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 is an area that people should be diving into, you know. But these things are gonna come and go. It's how are you at self learning? How are you at um without the pressure of a grade or needing to complete the the boot camp in a certain time or whatever, um, are you internally driven to learn these new things? I'm really glad to hear you are. Obviously, you're doing well in your career and will continue to just based on that alone. Yeah. I, and I mean, it's when I was kind of going through through the course, there's there's always this little tad bit of like how many days it's expected for you to finish it. And I learned initially, you know, what would take three days I was able to do in, you know, a 10 hour period. Mm-hmm. I kind of sped through it, but it was a lot of it was more of a refresher for me personally due to my my previous background are you talking about the one that you did um being paid for by the school by your company uh negative uh the, here at, at the uh, tech academy oh yeah right so, because you did you you, you, yep. you built websites as, as a kid and... yeah so so for for me it was uh, starting off it was more of a refresher than oh, uh, yeah. anything else and so kind of towards the the later courses you know back when python was being offered or whatever mm-hmm. c sharp it's like hey it's expected you know week or 10 days or whatever and so that would kind of give you almost a, a little bit of pressure, but it's it's an industry standard. You mm-hmm. know, when when you're given an, an assignment or, or a project and every time I go into systems meetings with, you know, my my CFO, my, my CTO and CEO, they all ask, hey, you know, we need this done. We're, we're trying to do, you know, release this new technology, but, you know, we need this kind of structure built, um, which is essentially just another yeah. – a API, and that's when I'm like, okay, how do I assess it? How many days do I think it's going to take? Immediately, I kind of right off the bat have to, you know, do a little blueprint mm-hmm. and then give an an, an estimate. Um, a lot of the meetings that I do are typically agile, mm-hmm. sort of kind of more more stand ups, uh, quick kind of touch base, see how much progress we're actually making, see what kind of where we're at, scoped out for for everything else, and from that, you know, when I when I talk to to my guys, it's I. I give them kind of deadlines that seem a little bit ambitious, mm-hmm. but it's nothing that I don't believe they have the ability to do. Yeah. So here at the the Tech Academy, when you know you start struggling, you kind of you first experience your own you know your own like problem that's not given to you in the course where you have to you have to go out you have to figure out the the, the te- uh, technologies. Yeah, you know, like for example, I think uh, the first one is in the MySQL course. Yep. Where it's like you have to go out, and you have to you have to learn a little bit, kind of of a, a small part part of the code. I forgot what it was. Yeah, but know. we don't hand it to you on a silver platter like exactly. the other stops. Yeah, yep. we start taking the training wheels off. Yeah, on and purpose. and and that's that's where you kind of first get your 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 feet wet on okay, how do how do you solve the problem yourself? Because it's not always a here, let us give it to you. You know, here's essentially here here's the project. It's it's more of a what's the thought process? How are you going to figure it out? And can you do it in the allotted amount of time? And, and that's pretty much how the real world operates, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's business is business. If you yep. don't you don't make sales, you don't you don't essentially have a job. Yeah. I mean, so in in order to keep doing that, you got to keep working hard and meeting these deadlines. There rarely do we ever not not actually meet them, but if you know if some something like like that happens, there's always a justifiable cause. Like, hey, our power went out and it snowed for you know eight days in a row. Right. But, <laughs> That thanks to remote desktop connections, now we can kind of <laughs> alleviate no, that. No, no excuse. It's <laughs> great. So excellent. Now, what area of the country are you from? I forgot. Uh, so I was actually uh, born here in Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. but my family is from the USSR. Okay. So I I uh, grew up bilingual. Um, I didn't know a lick of English till I was about five years old. Uh, first started going to the, going to kindergarten, 
And then I realized, hey, other people speak a whole different language. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a learning curve for me. Well, I, yeah, I can imagine. Were you the first English speaker in the home? Uh, I guess I I I have a one older brother who's uh two years older than me, so he he kind of started just a tad bit earlier. Okay, but we kind of both started learning English at at the same time due to my parents when they first came here. You know they they didn't know English. They they had a they kind of went through a Russian translator okay. of helping him get adjusted to yeah. you know work life and all that good jazz and helping him get into programs. Uh, now my parents both speak fluent English and. I mean, accents, of course, but, you know, yeah. they've, they've definitely adapted. And I, I I think that's actually one of the reasons why code has been so interesting to me is because it's, I don't, I don't really consider it any different than learning any other language. Yes, it has know? its own syntax. It has its, its own organization. Absolutely. Exactly. And, and so from that, I've, I've kind of, that's, that's when I first started diving. I remember like H, HTML when I was like 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was so cool that I can create a div container that like didn't actually exist, and I can write words where <laughs> I mean just on the random web page. Yeah. And it, I I don't know why, it, but it, it would just it almost made me giddy inside. I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I like show my mom, she'd be like, that <laughs> yeah, looks whatever. horrible. Yeah. And I was like, that's so cool though. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Still looks horrible. <laughs> that's awesome. That's where I learned uh, my my design skills could always improve. <laughs> <laughs> I have design skills that can always improve because when you start at the bottom, there's really nowhere to go but up. Exactly. Have you have you ever traveled back to Russia? Uh, so that is something I I always do uh, plan on. Um, currently, I'm actually heading to China. Okay. Uh, I have a China trip scheduled here uh, coming up in, in in October, and it's one of those things where, for the last three years, I've kind of dedicated my life a lot towards my my work and yeah. my my you know technical aspect of it. And my my company to where I haven't really taken a vacation, mm-hmm. you know. And a lot of people assume that what I do, you know, the, my fancy title, whatever. I'm just another developer. I just happen to, you know, fall into the right place at 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 the right time. But a lot of that is also dedication. There have yeah. been many many nights that I've had to give up of going out. Many weekends I've given up. I mean. I think the longest streak I've worked was like almost 40 something days consecutive of Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. And just, I mean, work is there, work is there. Like I said, there are deadlines to me. There are clients who have needs and there's always some sort of emergency client situation that comes up. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's, it's part of owning a business. People, some people get stressed out and you know, they kind of overwhelm themselves and kind of become almost anti-productive but, or counterproductive. Mm-hmm. But I, have learned at at this point now it's one of those skills you kind of pick up of all right instead of freaking out about it let's focus my energy into finding a solution mm-hmm. instead of you know having this 30 minute like oh what am i going to do what am i going to do yeah but problem's still going to be there when you're done yeah what no matter <laughs> exactly so uh time management has been one of the things i've definitely uh learned i guess mastered yeah to say yeah well the military can definitely do that for you definitely like, the idea of working seven days a week is like, uh, yeah, okay. Can All I right. do it anyway? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Well, Dennis, I really appreciate you sitting down with me. Um, Eric, I'm very, very proud of you. I re- really am. Like Thank you're, you. you're an exemplary graduate. Um, I mean, a lot of that is you, but obviously um, we put the school here so that people like you can get the skills they need to go off and, and get where they were going to probably get anyway a whole lot faster. Yeah. So well done. Thank you. I cool. greatly appreciate it. I'm glad you guys invited me back for this talk. Absolutely. How'd they go? Awesome. That's great. Excellent. Hi, this is Jack Stanley again, co-founder of the Tech Academy. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. I'd like to leave you with a suggestion. We call this Jack's Random Tips. Today's tip is, it's wise to write things down. I recommend having a document or single location wherein you track all of your tasks. I can't tell you how many times I've had a great idea, forgot to document it, and it never came to fruition. I don't care how good your memory is, it's best to write things down. Nowadays, this is easy. We can take out Google Drive on our phone and note things down there. If you go to a meeting, bring paper or your laptop and take notes. If your employer assigns you a task, note it down somewhere. At the start of my day, I look at my list of tasks. If I think of more, I add to it. It keeps you grounded and oriented. This may sound stupid, but I have countless examples wherein somebody forgot something very important due to lack of documentation. I once verbally told my bookkeeper to transfer money. She said she would, but then she forgot. 
the result, an overdrawn account. If she had noted it down and regularly checked her notes, she couldn't have dropped the task. Another point on this, don't note tasks in several locations. Then you're bouncing in between a notebook, your laptop, your phone, etc. And you'll have the same problem. You'll drop balls. Just make a Google Drive document and note everything down there. That can be accessed online from anywhere. There is other software that exists for this as well. The moral of this story, operate on a task list and keep things in writing where possible. And again, if you are interested in enrolling in our software developer bootcamp, please visit our website, learncodinganywhere.com. During our bootcamp, students learn several in-demand programming languages. By the end of the bootcamp, students are well-rounded, entry-level software developers. In addition to our thorough curriculum, one of the things that sets us apart is that our program is self-paced, and we offer open enrollment, which means students can start anytime. Whether you're looking for a career change, you're unemployed, or fresh out of high school, the Tech Academy is the perfect option for those interested in breaking into the technology industry. LearnCodingAnywhere.com